Hey everyone, Mark Luber here from Careers Out There. You can find me at careersoutthere.com. I recently interviewed Joe Sullivan. He's a chemical engineer in the pharmaceutical industry with over 10 years of experience. I asked Joe to help us understand engineering and what chemical engineers do, and he told this amazing story. Check it out. For some reason, engineering is not sexy. People don't care. So it's your job today for our audience. Yeah. You got to make it sexy. So we'll put that pressure on you so that we can turn on a whole future of uh, chemical engineers that are watching today. You told me a really, really eye-opening story the other day that helped me understand engineering a lot. How you helped the paint company that you worked at by sure. applying these basic foundations of chemical engineering. Yeah, I mean, um, so the paint factory story I shared with you the other day is uh, I worked at a, in, in the paint industry for about a year. Um, they, until I was hired, they had basically for, I think, about 100 years that site had been there. So they'd never really had a process engineer. They never had like a, a real chemical engineer who understood the nature of fluids, okay, which is all of what paint is, right? Um, so uh, when I first got there uh, and, I, and I got to work out in the factory, they had a particular process where they were making white paint. Um, and in the process of making paint, you grind pigment up. Um, and you, the, as you grind it more and more, you get stronger and stronger paint, essentially. And they had had this tank, and it would take them up to a week um, of adding the pigment in the tank and mixing it, agitating it with what you can almost imagine like a blender, like blade in there, uh, like mixing it up, this blade that can be lowered or raised, and they would turn it on high speed and it would get mixed up and then they'd run it through a mill, which is a bunch of balls that crunch the pigment up more, and they bring it back into the tank and they do that again and again. Um, and they had found that, you know, this process took several iterations of going around that loop until they got the product out they needed for the customer in the end, right? So I said, oh, well, let me look at this. So I took a sample of the paint. Um, I took measurements of the tank. I went back to my desk. I, 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 I did some um, calculations. Uh, well, first I measured the paint and its properties, how thick it is, um, just some general properties, uh, how heavy it is. Um, and then I went back to my desk, and I kind of calculated out that they weren't running it correctly at all. And I went back out. Uh, I told them to turn down the motor on the the uh, the uh, tank, and they they kind of looked at me like like with some in, you know uh, like disbelief, and they said, oh like that you know that's never going to work, never in a million years. <clears throat> um, so, anyways, what I had established was that they were running the blades so fast that they had put the fluid into what's called turbulent flow, and when fluid is in turbulent flow, all the molecules in the fluid, and in this particular instance, the paint particles we wanted to get torn apart are all really just kind of dancing around each other because you can imagine like turbulence, when you think of things being turbulent, they're just, they're flopping all over each other, but they weren't really breaking apart. And so what I did instead was put the fluid in the tank in what's called laminar flow, where, where the fluid is moving against itself like this in sheets. And in between those sheets, if you can imagine, there's something stuck between the sheets. It gets torn apart. It gets pulled two different directions at once. And that would break it up very efficiently. So I had them lower the speed so, so the fluid would settle out into this beautiful laminar flow. And sure enough, I was able to grind all the pigment in the tank in like 28 hours. And we just had to do one pass through the mill we were done. And so they'd gone from several days down to 28 hours. And the look on their faces was like disbelief. <laughs> right? And yeah, I mean, you I, maximize you know, their output. It, you maximize their output by seven times. Yes, it's something close to that, yes. And again, that's what engineers do, is you, you take some time to think out what are the things affecting what I'm trying to make, and then you optimize those things when you figure them out, so as to make the thing better, cheaper, faster, stronger, like, you know, you know whatever you're looking for. And then they saw the value of engineering, and, that's, and that whole story helped me see the value, so i got to figure that it helps see the audience see the value, too. So I think that's, so you're, yeah. you're, you're making it sexy. So let's talk about, I want to get, <laughs> I guess the sexiest paint can be, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up. And if you want to learn more about the career path, you can find the full interview at careersoutthere.com where we interview professionals from all kinds of career paths about what they do so we can help you find a career that fits you and you can love what you do. You can also find us at Facebook, Twitter, and lots more videos here on YouTube. Thanks again for watching everybody. I'm Mark Luber. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.